What's up guys, it's your boy NCSO7 here, coming at you guys with a brand new story time, and this one isn't my own. I'll, again, I'll leave the the nar- auth- original author of this story time in the description down below, so go check him out, subscribe to his channel, and yeah, so anyways, this is going to be a pretty crazy story, alright? This story is about, and I'm going to be reading this story from the first person perspective, just so that way I don't get confused at all, so, yeah. So, this story is about how I got robbed in a GameStop. Interesting start. So, I'm 17 years old, and I am living in really questionably bad areas. In fact, they are bad areas. And there is not a lot of stuff for me to do. I mean, there are some stuff I could do, but nothing you would want to get into. But there was one other option, and that was just to play video games, and that is the decision I made because I am a video game nerd. So... I'm just playing games, and I, and on, and every other day, I would go to the nearest GameStop, and I would just go there, and I'd basically just loiter there, but what I would do is I would just play the games that they have on, like, the demo kiosks and whatnot, and I would even, like, talk with some of the customers to, like, help them get games that they were trying to get. I ended up doing such a good job of loitering at GameStop that I eventually got an actual job. And by my manager. And we're just going to call him Bobby. I don't know. I don't know why. So Bobby basically puts me like to work as like one of the cashiers. And kind of just someone to help guide the consumers to the games they want to get. And there's this one night at roughly like 9 o'clock that we're just then like we're just not. And like no one's really there and me and like some of my other like coworkers, we're just having a blast and and into the night, some of our friends, some of my other friends went in there and they had like their like bandanas and they had like their toy guns and they were pretending to shoot all of us and it, it was just so much fun. However, they eventually left quite quickly and then 10 minutes later, there were these guys, three guys in Full on dark hoodies, dark pants, and had bandanas and guns. And then when they come in, they pull up their pistols and scream, Get down on the MFing ground or we will shoot! Now, me, I mean, I didn't know what's really thing considering our friends have just got went in there like a, 10 minutes ago i've still never to the to that point in time ever seen a real gun so i i'm they say this and i'm just looking at them like what oh come on man like really i'm i'm not with this okay but bobby he has wide eyes and he's kind of giving me hand gestures kind of telling me to just shut up And then these guys start coming closer to us. And they're just like, get on the MF and ground, bro. And and like and they're and they're starting to point the guns at directly at us. And then before I even know it, I realize this is real. And I go to the ground, pretty much collapse to the ground, and start crying. I'm (laughs) I'm like, (laughs) oh, And they, and it was a very bad scene, because they, they took, like, they took me to the ground, and they, like, duct taped my eye to my mouth, and, like, they duct, like, they basically held me hostage, and in some of the other co, in the other co-workers as well, they didn't do it to Bobby, as he was kind of just playing it cool, and just trying to keep calm, because he did not want to get himself shot, we were able to see this through the surveillance footage that they showed us later on. And the robbers then start making their way over to the game consoles. And they get a PS2, Xbox, original Xbox, and GameCube. This was back in the older times, so not recent. And they get those systems. And keep in mind, and also keep in mind that this was happening around Christmas time. But And apparently from what I've heard, apparently gaming stores get 
robs a lot more around this time. So, in, in fact, Bobby actually ended up having to deal with two robberies beforehand, all within the same month. Yeah, and they and they were and they weren't even like two weeks away. They were like one and a half weeks apart from each other. And they got us like tied up, and they've got and they and they've got like all the games and stuff, and they've and they pretty much lit, like looted the cash register. But and, however, though, a door to the left of a, of the GameStop was a laundromat, and the people there, when they saw the bandana guys go into the GameStop, they called the police, and. We, and we could see from the surveillance footage that one policeman went up to the windows. Because, you know, like, GameStops have, like, like the entrances as, like, all glass. And this, and this police officer goes up to the window. Now, it was bad that it was only one police officer. But what this dude lacked in numbers, this dude made up for in sheer amount of balls because this dude in the security cam footage with like three bandana guys with guns they could easily outnumber the police officer this police officer goes to the glass and starts tapping the glass with his gun is basically giving them the look like you're screwing up don't do anything stupid all right and and then like the guy and like the robbers they see the police officer and then just like what the hell and then they see the police officer with the gun, and they get freaked out. I mean, I would be freaked out too, considering this police officer had such a huge amount of balls to do something like that. He definitely knows something that I don't know. And the robbers start, like, freaking out, and they're just, like, yelling and screaming at Bobby to just, like, get them out of there. And they start looking at a ba- at the back door to the GameStop. And, and they're trying to get out of there, and then Bob and Bobby's like, I, well, when I open the, you open the door, the alarm's gonna go off. And, they're, and the robbers are just like, no, man, I don't care. And then they go through the door, and then the alarm just starts going off. And then, and they basically escaped, and they just, and they just got out of the way, because right behind the GameStop was another really bad neighborhood, and they ended up hopping the fences, and they were never caught. To this day, I still don't know if they were caught. Now, and what, when once they left, Bobby eventually, un, like, un, like, got rid of the duct tape on our eyes and our, like, mouths, but right as he was finishing the last guy, tell me why the SWAT team finally shows up. And there's like 10 of these people. And they're, and they're screaming at us, get down on this ground or we will shoot. And, and me and like my other co-workers, we're just like, we're, the, we're yelling, we're the hostages, we're the hostages. And, and the SWAT team just didn't care. They're just like, get on the ground or we will shoot. So for the second time that night, I am on the ground. Damn it. <laughs> eventually though, the re- like eventually like one of the big heads of GameStop like in this area, like one of the, the bosses who was in charge of like GameStops in that area eventually came to clarify things with the police about the robbery and whatnot and again they weren't ever caught and she and like and Bobby, he's pleading all of our cases, especially mine, considering that the, like the boss lady did not necessarily think that I was a hostage. And like, yeah, and Bobby and like Bobby, like because could, this boss lady did not like. And Bobby's pleading my case. Like, he's saying, like, he had nothing to do with this. He's always helping out all the time. The police start going through, like, all of, like, us workers. And he, and she came, got to me, and he just went through stuff. And basically said that I didn't really do anything. He probably didn't want that to be the case, but he doesn't have any evidence. What can he do? But then once the police officer goes, walks away, the boss lady comes up to me and says, I know the police just verified that you didn't do any of what just happened, but I think you were in on this. And I'm about to just say, but miss, I didn't do, and she just cuts me off and just says, look, I hope to God I never see you in one of my GameStops ever again. 
and she and she's giving me a really creepy look and then she just leaves the GameStop like a boss needless to say I stopped working at that GameStop pretty much because I was forced to because that boss lady pretty much got me fired because not much I could do there but even so I never went to that GameStop ever again however the story doesn't necessarily end there because years later I'm going to a GameStop to get Dead Rising like Dead Rising or some game on PS3 years later and I'm going to a different GameStop in like a different area and I'm going to like get my game and once I go up to the register I notice that and the cashier is talking to someone and then I realize that the person the cashier is talking to is the boss lady and then she looks at me and she gets startled and jumps back like Ugh. and then and I, and I just don't and I just look at her and I and I just play it cool like I honestly think that she probably thought that I was going to pull out the gun and rob the place and she's just looking at me and giving me the same creepy look and I just Played it cool, just got my game, and left. She never took my eyes off of me. It never changed her look. And once I was out of there, I was like, wow. So that's the story time for today. It was a bit more interesting. Again, this is not my own story. If you want to check out the narrator or author of the original story, the link to his YouTube channel will be in the description down below. Blasphemous HD, check him out, watch some of his other story times, because he's got a lot of good ones, and yeah, so anyways, I'll see you guys later, peace out.